four. Uh, verse number six, just a few minutes this evening. Uh, exercising spiritually. Uh, exercising spiritually, uh, scripture was read in your hearing. Uh, verse Timothy four, verse six. Uh, Paul talking to Timothy. Uh, Mind him that if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, uh, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. He said, For refuse of uh, fame and old wise fables and exercise thyself, brother, unto godliness. For bodily exercise part of little. But godliness is possible unto all things, having the promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. As we think about uh, what Paul says here to his son in the gospel, Timothy, it reminds us of the importance of uh, exercising. Uh, exercising for the purpose of uh, increasing uh, our uh, Cardio, our endurance, and our strength, and, and just exercise in general, it gives you more uh, strength. Amen. Uh, gives you the ability to make it throughout sometimes days that can be very, very uh, long and exhausting. But exercise is important physically. It keeps your body uh, in a better state of readiness. Uh, it's important to us, and we understand that people spend billions and billions of dollars in personal trainings and and all kinds of different things to exercise their body. And many times, we as Christians, we also get caught up in that. And there's nothing wrong with exercising your body, but it's even more important to look at exercise from a spiritual nature, from a spiritual uh, standpoint. And I know we have talked about this before, uh, probably not too long ago, but it's just, it's just important that we be reminded of the importance of exercising spiritually. The importance of exercising spiritually. Uh, the better exercise routine someone has, the better diet they, uh, this, this one with a certain diet, uh, the better they are, in some cases, in some instances, not all the time, but they're able to ward off different, different illnesses and sickness and things like that. And if this one thing that you don't want to allow yourself to do is to get sick in a spiritual way. Amen? Amen? You don't want to allow yourself to get sick in a spiritual way because just a matter of getting sick and keep getting sick and keep getting sick, eventually you're going to meet death. Amen? Right. So we have to make sure we have the, have the caution and guard against uh, allowing ourselves to become uh, too uh, weak and too sickly from a spiritual standpoint. It's important physically. Amen? But my Bible says no flesh and blood is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Right. So we have to make sure we don't forget to focus on the spiritual well-being. And we have to remind our children and our grandchildren the importance of uh, exercising and working on the spiritual uh, aspects. So as we look at uh, Paul talking to Timothy here, uh, it's important to understand that these instructions are there to help us to be reminded of uh, working on ourselves from a spiritual standpoint. And when I think about uh, Spiritually being prepared, uh, spiritually being ready, or spiritually uh, exercising, getting to where I need to be, uh, a couple things come to mind. And one of those things is uh, readiness. You have to understand the importance of uh, being uh, ready. So there's, there's, uh, there's uh, readiness, uh, there's repetition, there's resistance. I'm going to show you how all these come together. There's resistance. And then there's resolve. That's how we spell the mind of the living happy way. But these four things are important. We talk about exercising from a physical uh, standpoint. And even more so, we start thinking about from a spiritual standpoint. We talk about readiness. Repetition, resistance, and resolution. Now, how many of you guys want to go out here and remember that? Y'all need a pencil? Y'all watch the tape? <laughs> you know, listen, listen, listen to the CD? Sister Lyons, she, she's taking notes. Y'all see Sister Lyons. But when it comes to exercising spiritually, 
It's important that you look at readiness, repetition, resistance, and resolution. And the purpose behind these uh, four things is to exercise godliness. What Paul was saying to Timothy here in the text was that, hey, this is going to lead you to a level of godliness that's going to be beneficial. Let's read that again. First Timothy 4, uh, 6 says, uh, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, First Timothy 4, 6, Thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. He says, But well, refuse to find an old wise fables, and watch this, exercise thyself rather unto what? Godliness. Godliness simply means God like. What about being God like or godliness? We are trying to obtain God like attributes and characteristics. That's what we talked about this morning, right? The characteristics of God as a father and how men ought to attain it, uh, as, uh, aspire to uh, obtain that level. Amen. So, in a sense, we're talking about spiritually getting ready or trying to be like God. But it's going to require exercise. You ain't going to be the, the best uh, uh, world champion bodybuilder by sitting down eating potato chips and drinking Cokes. And eating them all day long, Carter. That's right. You can read all the books on nutrition. You can watch all the videos and everything you want to. You can attend all the seminars. But if you sit around all day eating uh, pop, uh, Popeyes and popcorn and potato chips and sodas and stuff and not working out, sitting on the couch, you're not going to be ready. Right. You're going to have to work. Exercise. And we want to get what we need to be spiritually because we want to stand for Jesus. He would say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Right. If you're not exercising yourself spiritually, you will not make it there. But you want to be before him, but you want to hear him say, well done. Sure. We want to hear him say, well done, amen. amen. We want the crown. Amen. That's what we want. You're not going to obtain your crown if you don't take care of yourself. That's right. You have to exercise. So let me give you this real quick here in this uh, this, this, this video is team. Talk about exercising spiritually. We're talking about uh, what do we need for proper spiritual exercise? We need readiness, right? In order to exercise, you first have to be ready to exercise. You ever seen the guy that you know, January 1? Resolution, go to the gym, they get in there, man, they get on the treadmill, get on the bicycle, pump about 25 pounds of weight, then you don't see them no more. They weren't ready. You gotta be ready. And that starts here. There has to be a mind decision. You have to be ready. You have to have a willingness. You have to have a desire. All right. Mm -hmm. You have to have a decision of the mind. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, I'm not gonna give y'all all this. You may go to class or sometime to pick up the rest of this. But in 1 Peter 1 13, this is how you get yourself ready. This is how you get your mind ready. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, he says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You got to work on your mind, amen? Right. You got to gird up your mind. You got to be prepared. You got to go in there, and you have to be ready. That's where the readiness come in. Then you can show up at the gym and stuff, but if you ain't ready, you just going to show up there, and you're going to find your corner and sit down and drink a bunch of gay and you can't get ahead. You've got to come there, and your mind has to be prepared. If you want to get in shape spiritually, get your mind started. Mm -hmm. Set your mind on that. I want to be ready. I got to start here. I got to work on my mind, my thoughts. I got to start there. First Peter three fifteen. Peter says, First Peter three fifteen. Talking about working on your mind, he says, "But so sanctify the Lord God in your what hearts." And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. There has to be a decision of the mind. Mm -hmm. Then once you have your mind set, you still got to start. Amen? There has to be a willingness to begin. You can think about beginning, but until you begin, amen, until you begin, you can think about it all day. But until you step out and begin to work on yourself, to make a change, 
There has to be a willingness to begin. Paul displayed a willingness to begin. In uh, Romans chapter 1, verse, verse 15, you have to have a willingness to begin. Uh, just, 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 just watch this list. In Romans chapter 1, verse 15, Paul says, So as much as is in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Paul was telling the, Rome, the church of Rome, I am so ready to come to you. I'm looking forward to coming to you. But then the opportunity to present itself, and Paul never goes in with You have to have a readiness, and you have to have a willingness. Make up your mind, and then you have to be willing to, to begin. Paul had his mind made up that he was ready to go, but what if the time came and Paul said, well, I really just don't feel like it. Make up your mind, then have a willingness to step forward and begin. Then there has to be a desire to act. When the opportunity presents itself, one has to act. If Paul presented an opportunity to go to Rome, and then Paul said, well, you know what, I really didn't want to go to Rome. I had a willingness to go, a willingness to begin. I thought about it, I really want to go, but then say, well, I'm not going to go this time. He had to be ready to act. Y'all see that? You go to the gym, make up your mind, go to the gym, then you go in the gym, coach, and then you start working out. I can tell you that now, coach, coach, right? Coach, coach. <laughs> two coaches, they ain't mad. You have to go in there and just to start working out. You can't go in there just with your potato chips and ham them and start, you know, well, it's not, well, I'm using this bench. What you doing? Eat my potato chips and ham and them. You might need that to work out. Well, you got to go in there and do what? Start working. You got to do it. That's having a readiness. That's having a readiness. Now, in exercising, working out, there's something called repetition. That's the guy who goes to the gym, gets a 15 pound weight, right, gets in the mirror, and over there running. <clears throat> and then puts the 15 pound weight down and walk out, and they ready. Mm -mm. No, not so much. Nope. What did they fail to do? No repetition, Dwayne. Right. Just the two 15 pound weights a couple times, please, how to get you where you need to be. Nope. There has to be repetition. Yeah. Knowing John 3.16, and being able to quote John 3.16 every time a situation comes up, you need to work out the amen. You need something else, amen. You need more. That's a good place to start. But you need more. Mm -hmm. Same thing with going to the gym. You got to start, and then you start continuing repetition, and you work out, and then you start doing some changes. So there's readiness, there's repetition. In order to exercise, repetition has to be involved. Everybody see that? Walking two steps in exercising. You just move from one spot to another. Two steps, man. You tell me you exercise. Doing one milk, Brother Wayne, ain't exercise. You gotta repeat it. Mm -hmm. Amen. When it comes to Trying to grow spiritually, there's repetition that's required. That's why sometimes I would do a same lesson to us here, and I just change the name. And people come about it. Brother well, Bishop, that was a good sermon. That's why I guess you didn't get other whole times I preached it on. <laughs> repetition. But guess what? They found the guy. Repetition. And when we do something, or we do something, we take part in something, after a while, some kind of desired effect is going to take place. Mm -hmm. But it requires repetition. So spiritually, do we just do one short prayer? One short prayer, call it a devotion. Read one verse, call it a study. Man, what, what, you been studying God's word? Yeah, man, I got this one verse down. John 3.16. Okay, what are you planning on next? All good. We have been for the Olympics now. Mm -mm. It requires repetition. One service per week, and then call ourselves faithful. I'm talking about preaching to the choir now, what they say. Right. <laughs> I should have had this this morning now. One service a week, then we call ourselves faithful. Faithful to what? Every time there's an opportunity to study God's word, if we love the Lord, we should want to be here. Amen? Amen. 
You should have to be a fourth thing, and, and you should have to go with Hebrews, uh, what's that scripture? 10, 20, 10, 25, is that it? Not the second sentence? You should have to go with Hebrews 10, 25, is that it? You ought to want to, amen? You ought to want to be there. There's an importance understanding the repetition. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12 through 15, I'm just reading one of these. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12 through 15. Peter says, I will not be negligent. 2 Peter 1, verse 12, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. They are in me, or right, or proper, as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you what? In remembrance. Repetition. Repetition. How do we learn? Repetition. Coach, how do you guys learn to play? Repetition. They don't want that one time practice the play, now they're ready for the Super Bowl. It requires repetition. How do I come face to the Lord? Repetition. How do I learn to study God's word? Repetition. How do I get better at prayer? Repetition. Have to keep doing something spiritually over and over and over so that it's going to help me. That's exercise. Taking two steps is not exercise. If I step two steps, that's going to take two steps more, and next we've got to take two more steps. You're not going to be where you need to be, amen? If we can see that from a physical, we can also see it from a spiritual. There's something trying to help us. Prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5 17, Paul says, pray without ceasing. What's that going to do? Get us used to pray. It's going to become just as common as breathing. Amen? Mm -hmm. We don't have to remind ourselves to breathe, do we? Nope. Anybody? No, we don't have to remind. Breathe, brother Bishop. Breathe, brother Bishop. Breathe. Don't be breathing, Barry. No. It, it's, it's a natural, right? That's how our prayer lives should be. If we're going to go to where we need to be, we have to have repetition involved in our spiritual lives. Mm -hmm. Resistance. In order to exercise, there must be some kind of resistance. Have you ever got any good exercise without some kind of resistance being involved in that? Nope. Well, the way there's negative resistance, there's positive resistance, right? Right. Yeah. There's got to be some kind of resistance involved. What's that doing? It's making your muscles grow, making your muscles develop. You seen a guy in the gym with empty hands? Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. What's he doing? Taking up air? Yep. No resistance there. You have to have some kind of resistance. If we can see that from a from a from a from a physical, this will help you spiritually. Somebody you ever sit on the couch and get them a good cardio workout by uh, sitting on the couch? If you sit on the couch and you get up and you're tired and you, you build these drinks out, amen? You just been sitting there. You're not getting a cardio workout. You're just sitting. You can't get up for anything. Do something. That's right. yeah. Work yourself. Resistance is involved. Exercise demands resistance. Spiritual exercise 